Welcome to part 4 on how to make a jug edit on Premiere Pro. This one is on transitions. There is a lot to say so let's jump straight into it. Right click, new item, adjustment layer and place this on top of your clip. The first effect you're going to add is S shake under sapphire distort directly onto the adjustment layer. And what you're going to do is click on the stopwatch to place a keyframe for the amplitude and set this to 4. By the way, I am going to hide my adjustment layer so it's easier to keyframe because, it, you know, S shake, it keeps bouncing around, plus it just makes it easier to keyframe stuff. So yeah, set that to four. And then you want to set the frequency to 9.2. Next, you want to drag your playhead to the next beat. So I'm using markers, as I said, and then you want to head one frame back from that point. Set the amplitude to zero. And what you're going to do is open up the graph. So click on the arrow next to it. If you wanted to, you could use Smoothify, but I don't recommend it for something like this. So we're just going to do it manually. I'm going to use the bottom graph here. I will expand it just to make it easier for you to see. So first I'm going to right click, ease in. And it seems like I've forgotten how to graph because it's not the bottom one that I'm supposed to use. It's this one at the top here. So I'm just going to expand that. Grab this tiny handle here and pull it to the left like so. That looks fine to me. So what we're going to do now is duplicate these keyframes over to the other markers. Hold Alt on your keyboard and select both of these keyframes. Then you want to click and drag it starting from the first all the way to the right. So that's going to align the first keyframe with my marker. So for you, it would be the music, which is the beat. I'm going to adjust my keyframe. So I'm going to push this one here, just one frame back. So not on the marker, that's for the first keyframe only. So I'm going to highlight that and then duplicate again, move this back just there and repeat one last time. The keyframe has kind of gone off, so I'm just going to extend that and then drag it back. So this one right here, drag it back and cut the adjustment layer down. All right, I'm going to minimize this. And the next one I'm going to add is S underscore blur mo curves. This one underneath Sapphire Blur plus Sharpen. So add it directly onto the adjustment layer. For this one, it's probably best if we use Smoothify again. I'm going to use this to make some zoom effects. Now, first of all, what you can do is move the center X, Y. So if your character is over there, you can move it over there. Mine's pretty much centered, so I don't really have to move it, but I'm going to move it like around here maybe because my character tilts his head down over time. So I'm just going to move it around here time to make these scales. So I'm going to keyframe the Z disk at the start and I will be using these keyframes that we just made as reference to help us. Or you could just use the markers if you have any. So what I'm going to do is set this to 0.8 and then I'm going to move to my next marker. I'm going to go 1, next marker, 0.95. As I said, we're going to make this easier by using Smoothify. So I'm just going to make a graph that looks like this, I don't know if that's going to work. So make sure Z disk is enabled. If you enable amplitude, that's going to mess up your keyframe. So make sure that is not enabled. All we're looking for is Z disk. All right. So press go. I think that's a bit too much. Actually, it's way too zoomed in. So I am going to get rid of it. Enable Z disk, delete these keyframes. I think 0.9 is more than enough. So I'm just going to make those changes. Yep, it looks perfect to me. Might also have to move the center XY slightly higher, maybe around here. In fact, I'm going to retry that. This is the thing with editing. You're not going to get it perfect first time. Even I'm making mistakes, even though I've already tried making the edit. Anyways, what I'm going to do is 0.8 at the start and then one for the second marker and then 0.9 for the third and then back to one for the fourth. I feel like these shakes here are way too aggressive. I don't really like them anymore, so I am going to open it back up. The first one seems OK, but these ones, they're way too aggressive. So I'm going to cut them down to about one for the amplitude for each beginning keyframe. So I'm just going to do that. OK, but now it's like barely shaking. So I'm going to do two instead. Now that looks much better than before. I also forgot to place a keyframe at the end here, so I'm going to add 0.9 then I'm going to graph so I'm going to apply this graph I don't think it works that well but it's not that serious so I'm going to apply it to all of these all right that's blur mode curves done so I can collapse that 
And the final effect, I believe, is Warp Bubble under Sapphire Distort onto the adjustment layer and back to effect controls. Just like S Shake, I'm going to mark it on the beat. So, gonna keyframe the amplitude at the start, set the frequency to 0.7, shift speed X and Y both to 4000. So, just like before, head to the marker one frame back and then set the amplitude to zero. We could graph this, but instead what I'm going to do is just right click and ease in. Then I'm going to duplicate them over. So highlight, alt, click and drag, adjust. And now if we take a look, yeah, that's very aggressive, honestly. I believe once we add effects such as one framers, it's going to look much better. And plus, we can always make adjustments to S shake if we don't like it. So first of all, what I'm going to do is actually increase the frequency for the warp bubble. It just makes the wobble effect stronger. So let me try two first, see how that looks. Might be a bit too much. Yeah, that's way too much. So let's go for one instead. And so far, that's looking pretty good. So what I can do is collapse this and finally end this video. It's been so long, but we are almost done. Just need to go over some effects and then how to export. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next part. Peace.